Here we go. Time to build a book nook. Never done one of these. See all the other YouTubers doing it. Thought, why not? Besides, I got a great idea. And it's a gift. It's going to be a gift. Well, it was a gift because I kind of already gave it to her. But at the time, <laughs> I wanted to make my sister a super cool birthday present. And since she's like a huge Stephen King fan, huge, um, I wanted to make her an it book nook, an it one, you know, it to go in her coffin bookcase filled with Stephen King books. Yes, coffin. It's cool. I'll show you. I promise. So I started out with a plan, uh, which was um, I knew it had to be a box and I had a size. I, I did have her husband measure um, the size of the bookshelf thinking, well, okay. Um, I need to obviously make sure this can actually fit. <laughs> I also knew that I wanted to have like some really cool shadow effect going on, like with Pennywise. And uh, I wasn't really sure I was going to pull that one off, but, eh, you know, I thought it would be cool. And so that was mostly, as far as the plan goes, that was pretty much all I had. So I started out obviously building a, a box and then another box that goes inside of the box. So that I could have like this hidey hole compartment where I would put all the technical stuff, all the wiring, because there's going to be lights. It's definitely going to add lights. And like I said, a shadow effect, which there was a lot of trial and error when it came to that. Lots of not so going to work stuff. And lucky for you, I edited most of that stuff out. So um, it looks like I know what I'm doing. And, like, I had it all organized. But in reality, yeah, trial and error. And it's okay to, to not have a plan occasionally. Anyways. So, here we are. Okay. Uh, focus here. As you can see, I used a lot of tape. Um, I have commitment issues. Um, I also wanted to be able to pull this whole thing back apart. Because trying to film creating a book nook in a tight little tiny spot is very difficult. So I thought if I could just pull it all back apart and, and build it that way, you guys could see it all. And it, it worked um, till the end. But you'll see. Anyways, so here I am using this fantastic Dr. Pepper box to form uh, the rounded top of the tunnel. So I watched the clip many, many times to um, obsess over all of the little details inside of the IT tunnel. Um, it was a round tunnel, like a sewer system should be, but trying to create a round tunnel that's going to fit inside of a box is very difficult, especially with all the extra stuff I wanted to do. So I decided just to have that kind of round shape at the top and um, narrow it down at the bottom so that I could kind of fit everything in there. So um, the Dr. Pepper box came in handy for that. I need something that was going to hold its shape. And then, as you can see here, um, I'm cutting it apart, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when you pull all the tape off now, I'm going to have, you know, actual sides to work with and, and I can start working on all of the small details side by side. And then in the end, just pray and hope that it all fits back together when it's all said and done. So, uh, yeah, you'll see me tearing everything apart several times. Okay. So moving on to the floor. All right. We got some plaster of Paris here little bit of paint, um, water. So I wanted to pour resin, uh, a sewer filled with water and garbage and other nasty stuff. So I wanted to do a nasty little resin pour, but I can't do that on foam paneling. I don't think you can. I'm sure you can't because I think it will eat through it. But anyway, so I decided to cover it in plaster mixed with a little paint and, and dirt because texture people. We need texture. So uh, we added some texture and it worked out great. Uh, I thickened it up nice uh, and I covered the whole floor in it. I go back later and, and paint it once it's dry, but I wanted it to be nice and dark. Nice and dark. And you know, the funny thing is I spent all this time painting it too later. And then when you actually pour the resin, you it's so dark inside the little tunnel. I can't see much. But anyways, it, it added a really cool texture. So I got all that done, set that aside to dry, 
and moved on to creating uh, the little panel concrete things for the wall. So it's like concrete on the inside, right? So I wanted to be able to texturize it, you know, create all the cool concrete looking stuff. So I took these foam boards and I cut them in half, which it was a giant pain in the butt. I could have just peeled the paperback in each one of these, but then I just thought it would be too thick because I didn't want to take up a whole bunch of space. So cutting them in half, I got the texture on both sides without having to peel the ridiculous foam board, which I hate doing, um, and um, save some space. So, I mean, it, it turned out. And uh, as you can see, my horribly dull razor blade just created texture on its own. So it was like... It's kind of handy, you know. So, yeah. I glued everything down with hot glue because I'm incredibly impatient. And I also wanted it to be, you know, real tough because I'm going to bend it back over again to create that shape. And, and I didn't want anything breaking off or coming loose or, you know, all that good stuff. So I, I cover both sides. And I did kind of measure and make sure the pieces fit. You know, I just wanted it to look like I knew what I was doing because I totally did mm-hmm I knew what I was doing creating stuff making stuff that's what I'm doing yep uh lots of glue so anyways I I get done I, I get all those little pieces glued on there I'm not sure why I show you all of that I guess I thought it was important um to see all the little nooks and crannies because I wanted it to yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, there's a couple pieces inside the tunnel that have like all these little bolts and I, I wanted to create the bolts kind of like Studson studios, you know, with his little rivets that he does. Um, of course I don't have any of those little rivet things and, and I'm not really sure how he edits his videos to make it go. Anyways, sorry, I'm getting besides the point. I found these little things <laughs> from those diamond paintings. You know those tiny little diamond paintings that people buy your children and then you kind of hate them for it? That's where these came from. I stole them from my 12-year-old's room. She won't miss them. Okay, I didn't steal them. I did have to ask because I didn't know where they were. But anyways, she said it was okay. Just so we're clear. And it took a long time to put them all on there and I didn't show it all to you. So um, there's that. Okay, so now this is... We're, we're going to move on and do some texturing. This is the back wall, though. So that piece... Big old flat piece in the back. I did, um, instead of cutting the whole foam panels in half, I decided to just rip that paper off that foam board and um, texture it. Okay, taking paper off of a foam board is awful. I have watched countless videos. I don't understand how people do it so easily. I've watched people just tear it right off like it was no big deal. I don't get it. I've tried it. I've, I've wet it down. I've heated it up with a heat gun. I've tried so many different ways. Nothing ever works. It, it always ends up a mess, and you're rubbing it off. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Tin foil. I use that tin foil little ball to create all these textures. I do that on all the walls. And then I go through, and I create all the cracks, because there's cracks. It's concrete. Concrete cracks over time. So that's what I did. And here I am. I'm creating more, more texture and um, more cracks. More cracks and texture. You know, you can never go wrong. There's no such thing as too much texture. Because at the end of the day, when you finally go to paint it and you do all that dry brushing, the more texture texture you have, the better. You don't want to under texture anything. No. So that's what we did. We textured it. Oh, and now we're, we're gluing the little... I don't know what you call those. I mean... They're still like, I think they're big steel beam things. I mean, obviously it's foam, but I mean, like in real life, I, I don't know what they make that out of. But I, I assumed it would be like a metal and these like, or maybe a, a steel. Wow. Okay. Yep. Gluing that stuff on. I made sure that when, when the tunnel came together that they would line up properly. Which is the two sides. And then I and then I covered the whole thing in Mod Podge. Well, Mod Podge and water. I love Mod Podge because it, it kind of hardens it up. It's, and, and it helps with, if you do texture it and, and you want it to hold its shape, Mod Podge. I'm telling you. Can't go wrong. And, and those little diamond things, um, 
they wouldn't take paint, so I had to mod podge them first to create like a crust over the top to paint. So then, oh yeah, then there's this, when you first enter the tunnel, you'll see it later, but just know that we're going to use this piece later, even if it doesn't make sense right now, later. It'll make sense later. I mod podge that too. Mod podged everything. And then I decided that it didn't have enough texture, so I stole that from my husband. It's like a wire brushy thingy, and it's really sharp. Um, but I added a bunch more texture to my walls because I just didn't think there was enough, and you can never go wrong with too much texture. And so then I, I also mod podged them again. I didn't show you that part because all well, this video is already like 30-some minutes, and I didn't want to bore the heck out of you. But I covered the whole thing in a combination of black paint and water. Um, although it shows here that I'm mainly just focusing on the cracks because that's, again, no plan. I just kind of go in with the flow and then I realize, you know, maybe I should just cover the whole thing. Ah, yeah. And those little diamond things, you know, make sure they were painted. Um, so yeah, I, I went through and I covered all of the walls with a combination of black paint and water. And then I let them dry. Now we're back to the floor. And it dried nicely, and I'm adding some watered-down acrylic paint and different hues of gross, yucky, vomit green and um, some rust because I like it. <clears throat> Dirt, rust, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it looked good. Now I'm going to let that dry. Oh, dry brushing. I like dry brushing. Dry brushing is fun. But you can go overboard real quick, real quick. So... My process that I like to do is I like to paint it first, then I add a bunch of dry brushing, like a lot of dry brushing, because I want to make it really light, you know, in color. So I add a lot of dry brushing to all of the panels, and then once it's all dry brushed, then I'll go back in with um, a bunch of washes, like an acrylic watered down wash. See, there they are. We're all dry brushed. Now I'm doing the washes. Washes are fun. Make sure your dry brushing is dry though. Otherwise it's pointless. Um, you got to be somewhat patient, which is not really one of my strong suits. But, oh, here I'm adding some rust because it's metal and metal rusts. And there's a lot of moisture inside this tunnel because I guess it's a sewer. And I'm going to try not to think about the fact that there's poop and sewage and stuff in there. So the green, well, green just makes sense because it's yucky. So that's what we're doing. We're adding green. And I ended up realizing that I really liked the green. So I kind of came back and added more green later. Here's some rusty color. Some more rust. More rust everywhere. I kind of I did the same thing on all of them. I uh, just kind of went to town. More washes. More green. I was like, wow, that green just pops. I think I'm going to add some more, some more green. Oh, and here's the back wall. Uh, look, turned out pretty good. Yeah. It's all that extra texture. Texture. And I decided that, you know, the green maybe shouldn't just be on the bottom. Eventually I go and I kind of add it everywhere because I like the green. And that is a combination of water, acrylic paint. I make all my own washes, guys, because I'm cheap and I already have a lot of paint. So it just works. Um, mostly burnt sienna and that really light green kind of makes this ugly army green. You can add a little yellow to it, maybe yellow ochre. But it looks good. I want to look creepy. Creep factor with the green especially. Definitely. Grossness creep factor. Okay. That's what we're going for here. Okay. Now I'm, I'm adding just a bit more dry brushing. Because who doesn't love dry brushing? it's fun and you, you kind of have a tendency once you put on all of your washes you kind of lose your the edges you you want your edges to come back out kind of pop a little bit more so this is just straight white I'm going back over it adding a little bit more straight white kind of to those edges just to kind of make it pop and I'm pretty sure those bolts shouldn't be white but I need them to pop here we are on the back wall I'm gonna add some more of that I go through all of the walls and do the same thing. But yeah, you don't need to see all of it. Man, it looks cool. Oh. 
Yep, a little bit on the edges of those little panels there. That rust turned out pretty cool too. Oh, we're moving on. Not sure what. It's going to be, oh, vines. Creepy dangly vines. That's what we're going to do now. And they were, these, this is Spanish moss. Spanish moss. Picked it up at, I don't know, could be Home Depot. Could be Michael's. Could be somewhere else. I don't know. But um, they needed to be uglier. I mean, they needed to be darker. They needed to be scarier. So I painted them. And I got, I made a mess. I had lots of paint under my fingernails. Oh, look. We're going we're gonna to put it back together now. But because I have commitment issues, we're going to use tape. I, I wanted to make sure that it actually fit together properly before I glued it. So we're going to tape it again. Trust me. It was a good idea because things didn't exactly fit properly. So um, had I glued it, I would have been really, really upset with myself. Except for here. Here I glued it. Um, wanted to try and keep that shape, that overall rounded, shapey look on the top. So I glued it and I taped it and then I, I glued it some more. Just I want to make sure it stayed together. I mean, it was very important. And it kind of was pointy at the top, so I put this little foam board on there. Kind of make sure it holds its shape. So it was still rounded at the top, and it worked. Flattened it out a bit. It's kind of perfect. Can't complain. Oh, and here we are with the lettering. We all float down here. That's got to be on there. I mean, has to be. Okay, so the balloon, guys. I decided to carve a balloon out of... This is polystyrene. The, the insulation foam. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, I'm sure. I buy it at Lowe's in like big old square sheets. I love it. It's so much fun to carve with it. Um, anyway, so I originally wanted this, this balloon. You have to have a balloon. If you're making an it, diorama, book nook, whatever you want to call it, you got to have a balloon. The red balloon is important. So I wanted this red balloon, but it kind of turned out a little too big. And um, originally I was going to have it like floating inside the tunnel. Well, um, it was way too big. So um, instead of that, I, I decided to do something different with it later, which you'll see. You probably already know, though. But So I just carved it, sanded it, tried to smooth it out as much as possible using a little bit of 120 sandpaper, or maybe it was 220, I can't remember. And then uh, set that aside. Now we're gluing on some of the, uh, the, the creepy moss vine stuff. Creepy moss vine stuff. It was hard to video this part because can't see much. Oh my gosh, guys, we're using glue. Still have commitment issues, though. I'm just saying. But I'm using glue. That means we're getting serious. Yep, that is serious business right there. Glue it all together and hope to God everything fits properly. It's scary. But it turned out good. I mean, it was a little wonky in a couple spots, but eh. If I hadn't told you that, nobody would ever know. So there it is, kind of all glued together. It kind of works. It works. It's a little warped because, you know, it's cardboard and stuff. Oh, yeah, this is uh, part of the entrance piece that I forgot to do earlier. It needed to, yeah. So I did the whole thing with that. Um, I painted it. I mod podged it. I painted it, and then I realized that I'm going to have to plaster it, too, because the resin will eat through the... It's going to be like a stopper, so the resin won't be able to pull past it. So I had to put some plaster on it, uh, which I had to plaster the balloon anyways. So it worked out, because I decided to plaster... I don't know why I paint. Yeah, I plastered the balloon, because I wanted it to be smooth, y'all. It needed to be smooth, like a balloon, smooth and shiny. So I'm plastering the end. It's going to be facing towards the resin on that little piece. Now I'm going to sand the plaster because it's dried. And try and get it as smooth as humanly possible, which it kind of was for the most part. Looked better. Looked way better. Um, now I'm covering it in Mod Podge. Again, I want it to be smooth. So lots of steps on that balloon. Oh, here we are. We're sealing. We're sealing things up. So I want to make sure that that resin doesn't leak anywhere. So I put a very generous amount of hot glue all around the inside seams of everything. 
um, so that it would hold. Now I'm I'm building a dam, a hot glue dam, and I actually end up going back later while I'm pouring the resin to add more dam. I'm adding these little weeds inside too because I want them to kind of be underneath the resin and poking out because it looks cool. So adding all that goody stuff in there. So exciting, prepping for resin. So here, we're going to put this little guy in there. And he's not even dry brushed yet. Like, I I was like, nope, we're just, we're moving on. And here's that little thingy. <laughs> I bet it's great to listen to me call everything a thingy. And a... Anyways, there's that. We're going to get that in there. And it just kind of creates a nice little entrance. Because they have one of those in the movie, you know, when they go into the tunnel. It looks like that. And so we're going to throw some dry brushing on there. Just a little bit. I didn't I didn't do what I did to the rest. Okay. So this is the front cover. I'm going to fly through this really, really quick because we're like at 33 minutes. So I didn't know what to do with it. So I just decided that I was going to decorate it the same that I did basically the inside of the uh, sewer. So here I'm just adding random bits of uh, foam to kind of make it look, I don't know, kind of like it opens, like the door. And then and here I'm I'm adding all the little cracks in the cement. Oh, and here, here we're doing the tin foil. So, yep, then we got the wire brushing. Super, super quick. We're moving along here. Oh, yeah, and then I covered the entire thing with those tiny little diamonds. All of it. See? Look at that. All of it. So then, then I, I Mod podge it. Just like I did everything else. Mod Podge it, let it dry, then I painted it black. Just like I did everything else. Now I'm dry brushing the crap out of it. Gonna dry brush it, dry brush it, get all that dry out, and then we're gonna paint it. Yep, we're gonna throw in some washes, some rusty washes, um, some dark black washes, brown washes, a little bit of everything, all sorts of washes. And then we're gonna dry brush it again. We're gonna throw some my dry, yep, we're gonna dry brush it again, um, and, and then we're Mod Podge. And this is the shiny stuff, so it looks like it's wet. And then I added some some Woodland Scenics. Uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Fine, turfy stuff. <laughs> and then I added some other Earth Woodland Scenics. And and then I added some vines on the face of it. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we're moving on to resin. Yep. We are going to pour some resin. So I'm using a combination of green and burnt sienna golden liquid acrylics to kind of try and make it look a bit like vomit, like green vomit, you know, like sewer vomit, because yeah, it's, it's all the icky stuff, you know. So um, I mixed uh, probably entirely too much, and as you can tell, I don't really care about the bubbles. Um, they actually smooth out later on their own, which is fantastic. I'm never, I never get that lucky, but... Here you can see I'm pouring it in, kind of trying to get it in the right angle. Oh, sorry about that. Um, this part, this is hard. Like, this is one of the things that's very challenging about videoing a, a book nook. Because they're, they're tiny. And anything you do in that tiny little, it's like, it's like I'm fighting with the camera to see. Like, it's in my way. Anyway, so here, here I'm, I'm adding some garbage. Because... In the particular scene where they're in the sewer in, in in the movie, there was a lot of garbage everywhere. Lots of garbage and among many other things. So I and and that's just a flashlight because I couldn't see anything. It's actually a headlamp. Um so yeah, just kind of spreading it around with all the garbage and, and making it look uh try to make it look realistic. Try to get as much resin in there as possible putting it on the walls so they look all wet and sewerish sewerish and so uh, this is the part where basically my camera cuts out yeah i'm trying to put georgie's boat in there it kept sinking so i decided to um pull it back out add some weeds to kind of have it sit on something and then then my camera ran out of memory right in the middle of all that of course it's resin it's gonna dry I had to keep going so you'll see the final when it's all done now we're back to the balloon gotta paint the balloon this took several layers of paint and 
this is like one of five. Don't worry, I don't show all of them to you. Just know that it took a lot of paint. And, uh, oh, yeah, here we're kind of mapping out where we're going to put our uh, switches for our lights. Because we're going to light it up. And actually, I put in two of these, um, but I only show you one because, well, you know. And, and see, I couldn't really make up my mind. <sighs> this is where the lack of planning kind of comes in, and there's a lot of trial and error and trying to figure out how it's all going to work. Um, I couldn't decide, decided just to go with two separate switches for two different lighting scenarios. These little switch pack things are pretty cool. I get them off of Amazon. Pretty sure you can get them at just about any hobby store, maybe, maybe not. But anyways, they go with a 9 volt. You just stick it in there. Make sure you test your light. Make sure you test it. Make sure it's working before you screw the back back on because it's kind of irritating when it doesn't work and you have to take it all the way apart. And Anyways, always test your lights. So now I'm going to do some soldering. Yep. I know how to solder now. It's a thing. Um, and I actually didn't learn on YouTube. My husband taught me. But YouTube is helpful for learning how to solder. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to solder these lights. As, as you can see, i got two of them there. There's one stuck to the cardboard, and then there's another one off to the side. I'm going to solder them all to the switches. So both of these lights are going to work off of one switch. I'm going to position them in different places. So you got to solder your, your positive and your negative and all that jazz. Quite proud of myself. Just going to just going to put it out there. I know how to solder. It always seemed like such a hard thing and it's really not. But I am very new at it, so don't judge me. Okay? Just just don't. And you got to get one of those little healthy hand things. It also comes with like a magnifying glass. Anyways, I'm getting very distracted. Look, the lights work. See? Uh, yeah, you got to test them. Always test them. So that was the first switch. This is the second switch. And this is going to be my shadow effect. Because I wanted Pennywise to be in the sewer. Well, at least the shadow, anyways. Oh, we're jumping back over here. We're going to add, hopefully, the final coat of paint to the balloon. Yeah, I do believe that's it. But after that's dry, oh, see, we're going to add some uh, shiny Mod Podge because I want it to be smooth and shiny. I already told you that. I'm just reiterating the fact that the balloon needs to be smooth and shiny. So that will be the last coat. Don't worry. It dries clear and shiny. Now I'm going to place my lights. This took a lot of time and a lot of planning. You can't just throw that stuff in there. You gotta you gotta plan that stuff out, which I I hadn't planned it originally, so then I had to plan it. Anyways, um so yeah, and then you got all this wires and stuff that's everywhere. It seems kind of untidy. Oh hey, hey, there's my uh my pennywise. I made pennywise a lot. I, I didn't know what size he needed to be so I could get the right shadow effect on the wall. And I, I, Originally, I wanted the shadow to be on the other wall, but it just didn't really work out that way. I, if I could make the book nook bigger, then sure, could have pulled it off, but I couldn't. And that's just a light basically shoved into a piece of foam. Um... You know, some people make this stuff and the internals all look really professional. Me? No. Nope. I shoved it all in there and then I sealed it up. And then uh, I'm going to put the front cover on. Don't worry. I do make it accessible so that if for some reason down the road uh, my sis has got to change the battery, she can get in there. But I guarantee I'll be getting a phone call. Yep. Especially if she opens it up and takes a look at it. Then it'll be like, what in the heck? Okay, not doing it. Anyways, so I had some random pieces left over that I didn't use, and so I used it to kind of seal the crack on that front cover. I wasn't sure what was going to be seen. Um, the sides, I probably could have put some more time and effort into the sides, but uh, I also knew the stack of books that was coming. 
So here we are. This is what I ended up doing with the balloon. I couldn't fit it on the inside because it was too big. It basically just took over the whole space. So I decided to make it look like it was floating, like outside of the uh, sewer. Like, and, and then I thought, oh, it'd be cool if it got caught up on like these vines, like the string and stuff. So I, I used the wire and put that, you know, and then I, you know, put that and, you know, did all that. Yeah, so I did that. I did that to make it look like it was floating. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, it's pretty cool. Oh, this is it, guys. This is like the end. Uh, these are the beauty shots, and I, I'm not gonna talk through the beauty shots. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you enjoy this. So, silence. From here on out. Enjoy. <laughs> Wow. I'm so sorry for all this shaky camera work. I'm totally going to fire my camera woman. Anyways, it's done, guys. This is it. The It the Book Nook is finally completed. And there it is. And it's right from home. Right next to the uh, Stephen King It book. In the coffin bookcase. Seriously, who doesn't want a coffin bookcase? I mean, come on. That thing is freaking cool. Look at all the Stephen King books. Told you she was a fan. Anyway, she liked it, by the way. Just letting you know. She liked uh, the book note, that is. Yeah. So, these are these are all my peeps. Okay, well, they're not my peeps. They don't really know I exist. But these are the people that have inspired me to create. And uh, they're awesome. So, go watch their channels. Because they created me. Okay, now, now it sounds weird. So, I'm just going to go. Thanks again. Uh, see you later. Bye.